Hey everybody, welcome back to lesson four in Still Life Drawing Simple. And I wanted to talk today about how to set up a still life around a theme. And up to this point, we've been drawing one object, three objects, up to five objects that were similar in shape. Um, but this time I wanted you to not only try to find things that um, might be similar in shape and more than three objects, but something that creates a theme. And I decided I would use some of my beach objects for my theme. You could have used something like uh, something out of your kitchen where you're using kitchen utensils and pots, or you could have used uh, sporting equipment like bats and balls and a glove. Um, or as something as simple as um, your vanity drawer where you've got your pearls and your lipstick and maybe your perfume bottle. That would all be beautiful. So I wanted to talk about then how I could arrange these objects knowing now that I've got uh, the rules of thumb for great composition that I have I've worked hard on and you have too so you know where things ought to line up and how they should relate to one another. Uh, and so this might just be a repeat for some of you, but now that we're working with objects that aren't quite all the same shape and repeat, um, this will be just a tad different. I also wanted to talk to you about uh, a Lazy Susan. So I picked this up at a garage sale, and obviously I can put my spices on it or put my condiments in the middle of the table, but I can also use it for my still life. And the reason I use this is because um, I can put all the objects onto it and I can turn it in different directions to see if I like something or don't. You could use a box too and just turn the box uh, to figure out which view you like the most. You also want to make sure you're looking at things at eye level versus up on top of it to see what you like as well. So I'm going to now kind of cover this with this yellow sheet of fabric that I have just because it's sunny and bright it doesn't mean it's going to be yellow in my picture. My picture um, is actually or my drawing is going to be in graphite so it'll be black white and all the shades in between. So let's see I've got a small piece of coral and it doesn't mean I'm going to use all these objects. I've got to figure out how I want to arrange them all. I've got a fish, a sea urchin, urchin a glass a uh, bobble that came off of a ship. I've got a little pot here with Aruba on it, which is special to me, and where I met my husband. And I have lots of things I could do. So I want to have a variety of height, and then I'm going to check to make sure I've got a good L shape once I get all the objects arranged. You might have a suitcase that you're trying to do, like a travel theme. Um, you might be trying to do a kitchen with a vase and some wooden spoons. So, no, that might be too high. I've got my wooden platter from Aruba in the back and all these things that I've collected along the way. And I might not even use that piece. I don't know just quite yet. And maybe Mr. Fish. Now I want to look too about how things are overlapping or touching each other. And he maybe he's over here kind of swimming in the ocean. Maybe he's kind of off the page. But the whole point is I could turn this and kind of look and see if there's something I like better. That's kind of an interesting shot too where I've got the green ball in the back and the tall vase with shells in the front. Maybe Mr. Fish is doing something a little different. Maybe he's going to go for a nosedive. Right? So I could kind of turn this around and look at different ways that I might view it. I could even draw it different ways. I think I really like this one actually with that tall piece in the middle rather than the very back. And this guy somehow taking a dive. So I have an overlap of pieces here. These are overlapping obviously. 
And then I have uh, a leader line. I've got the L going on here, the variety of height. Um, I've got definitely uh, some items I'm going to be able to create lots of contrast between white and dark. And do I want to have a little bit more? I don't know. I don't know. We'll just keep those outside and I could always add them in. Okay, I've got some good light source still coming in from the right side, but um, you can always take a picture of what you have. You could have taken a picture as I was twirling it to different directions to see what it is that you like best. So I'm going to take a little snapshot now. And even though my snapshot doesn't uh, have the, the black uh, wall extending to the left or right, that's okay because I can make that part up. And I'm going to take another shot just head on in case I like it better that way. And I think I'll take another shot. Maybe looking at it down, you know, up as if I'm standing up at it and seeing what happens when I'm standing up. So things are going to look different. This vase, when I'm looking straight on it, the jar looks straight on both sides. But when I'm standing up over it, it actually looks like uh, it's getting wider closer to me and it's getting more narrow. And so you need to really observe those things. That's what the uh, exercise is about closing your eyes and uh, seeing the red and the green objects that were on the slides. Okay, now that you get all that set up, we're gonna now talk about a visual aid that will help me with kind of cropping it all in and kind of gathering it all together. So visual aids happen to be things like uh, a cropping tool or a frame, I'll call it a frame. What I did is I just took a styrofoam cup. You could take a box and put a slit inside the cup. Stick. A, this is one of those store-bought frames. But you could have cut one out of cardboard just as easily. And now I have a nice little frame piece that I could use to zoom in and out on my object and see, see how it crops out my window over here and my sewing table over there. It actually helps me just focus on what's right in front of me. So I really want to keep the fish in there. So this might be my better angle right there. And, hmm, I don't know. Yeah, that might be what I really want to see. I could go even further in and see part of the sea urchin goes away. So you need to just hold your frame where you want it, right? Take a snapshot of that so you can remember that. And then what I like to do is mark my frame. So if this is what I love the most right here, if I like that shot, do do do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is mark on the frame that I like where the sea urchin's coming through right here. And then, whoops, I don't want to make a move. I like that I see the top of the vase right here. This will get my proportions right too. And I know that that fish is coming in somewhere down here. And I know that the edge of the tray is about here. Do you see where I'm getting at lining things up and getting the sizes correct? So these marks then I can lay down onto my paper and mark those on my paper. And then I can start to draw. Okay, I'm gonna get my drawing stuff out. I will see you back in just a minute. Hopefully that helps. I'll talk about some other measuring tools as well. See you in a bit.